After an extensive international search, Tourism Toronto, as recent as September last year, announced the appointment of Scott Beck as president and CEO, an industry veteran and familiar high-profile personality of the North American tourism sector. For past 14 years, you have served as president and CEO of Salt, uh, Visit Salt Lake in Salt Lake City and past board chair of Destinations International. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you to Canada and now to World Tourism Forum Institute Recovery Town Hall. Thank you, my pleasure to be here. Let's get started. Just as, just as recent as in last February, you issue a press release announcing Toronto sets new visitor record with 28 million visitors in 2019. The numbers were robust to say the least, 6.7 billion visitor economy spent, Whilst Canada employs 1.8 million jobs in tourism, Toronto supports lion's share of 70,000 jobs. It generates billions in tax revenue for all three levels of government, the city, the region, and the province. And fast forward to now, the next press release is issued two months later on 31st May. And as part of relief measures amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the federal government is doling out close to 8 million in critical funding to support Tourism Toronto. This is a huge contrast. Bring us up to speed, Scott. Give us a sense of what's going on, the outlook for tourism and hospitality moving forward in this crisis. Well, thank you. It's, um, it's a daunting task. Um, we probably take four days to go through all the machinations of what got us to where we are, but Suffice it to say that at the end of the first quarter, um, we were tracking, uh, you know, about 1% ahead of first quarter 2019. So on, 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 on sort of the path of having another very, very successful year in our industry, um, you know, sort of the leading indicator for us is the accommodation sector. Um, so I'll paint you a picture uh, at end of March, between the end of March and the end of April, occupancy in, in Toronto dropped by over 87%. Um, so you had the Crazy. downtown core of Toronto went from uh, uh, roughly in March, a little over 85% occupancy um, to the last week of April operating at 5% occupancy. So 95% vacancy in downtown Toronto. Um, and, and what's important, um, sort of what, what's really important within that number is that, you know, it's not hotel rooms that spend money in communities. It's the visitors that come to the hotel room Absolutely. that spend money. And when those hotels are, are have, have, have um, there's no one, no money in restaurants and in retail and in transportation and attractions, all of those other things, points to the economic impact. So, you know, our industry for all measures is ground to a halt. Um, you know, we are, um, we are forecasting right now uh, for the balance of 2020 and then for the first two quarters of 2021, uh, we will be down near nearly $5 billion in visitor spend wow. collectively. Um, you know, we, uh, I think, initially as, as, as the pandemic began to be part and parcel of, of, of daily life and as we began to understand the seriousness and the health implications um, and the importance of stay at home and all of those indicators, you know, all of those pointed to a very long and a very slow recovery for the tourism industry. Um, you know, we were the first hit. We're not going to be the first out of this either. Um, and so I think we, we took a very, uh, you know, a long-term view of this. Um, right. I would say that, um, you know, one of the things that was very clear to me um, is that the country of Canada um, and even hyper-focused the province of Ontario and even then the city of Toronto took a much different approach than many of our other peer cities south of the of the four ninth parallel. Wow. Um, and and I think we're benefiting from that. We're benefiting from the the, the worldwide reputation that the, the federal government, the provincial governments, and then our municipal governments have in, in response to the to the pandemic and how they're handling it. Um, and and I'm while I, I, haven't, I haven't really grown my circle of sort of people here in Toronto um, for sort of as you normally would in physical, you know, having a breaking bread together, having a cocktail, having a beer after work, um, I've been incredibly um, energized 
by the amount of people that are reaching out and are communicating and are sharing and talking about about where we're going. So sort of in, in a nutshell, you know, we were um, the, the top performing tourism market in Canada, um, you know, one of the biggest in North America in terms of its impact. Um, and now like almost every community that, 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 that has a significant part of the visitor economy as part of their overall economic foundation, we're, we're really hurting. Yeah. So I'll just dovetail on some of the comments that you made just now. You know, pre-COVID crisis, U.S. was Toronto's uh, largest international market, rising with nearly 2 million visitors, representing, I believe, a 3% increase year over year. And visitor spending from U.S. increased to $1.35 billion, a staggering 51% growth over five years, you know. And now you have a situation of closed borders, as by some estimates, some of the highest infections were carried forward from across the border. Uh, the Ford government is determined to keep things as they are for as long as necessary to flatten the curve of the virus. Does this worry you? And if so, what measures is Tourism Toronto taking to mitigate? Um, wow, so does it worry me? Um, so part of that question, I can't, I can't sort of dis disassociate myself from my own personal health and wellness and that of my family. Um, and so part of it says, I'm really glad I'm in Ontario right now and not, you know, in another state or another, another, another city. Um, and, and so that, that personal sort of health and wellness perspective, um, I'm encouraged by that. Yeah. Um, but it is really hard to look at my peers in the industry, the hotel community that I know and, and, and love so well to have, you know, 95% of their staff not working and laid off. So yeah. from a business recovery standpoint, um, we need to understand how we live with this virus, how we understand life post pandemic in terms of mitigation strategies, in terms of programs and processes that, that, in, that will do more to, to, to address health and safety. But recognizing that that's, that not everyone is, is, is we're not immune from it, right. not yet. And, and between now and a vaccine, um, I do hope there are conversations around the protocols, the regulations, the standards that can be put into place to mitigate. Um, and, and I sort of equate that to sort of what we saw in um, You know, one part of me says, us humans have really short memories. We've sort of gotten planes really quickly after 9-11. After right. um, but we did so because there was a mitigation strategy to ensure our safety. You had new protocols in terms of screening and taking your shoes off and all of those things that sort of became a mitigation to safety. Um, I think that's where we are right now in large measure with this. There, there are people talking about protocols that will, uh, a hotel, again, another perfect example is the accommodation sector. What they're doing to talk about what the rooms are going to look like in terms of cleanliness. The airline industry. Um, I, feel, I feel really good. If I get an airplane right now, I would. I feel really good about getting on an airplane. I think there's a lot of work to do between the airplane and the hotel. The Uber, the taxi, the public transportation. There's still a lot of areas where we need those mitigation strategies to make people feel comfortable. So I'm yeah, I'm worried from a business perspective. We can't live like this for the next two years and expect this community, the tourism community, to be as vibrant as it was. Um, you know, the new normal doesn't really work in our industry. <laughs> Zoom is not Zoom is not normal in our industry. No, we want hotels full. We want restaurants full. We want those elements of, of our and industry. That human back. connection, that face to face connection, the ability to be able to look in each other's eyes, you know, yeah. and uh, you can't do that on, on, on Zoom. And, um, uh, you know, to be able to negotiate deals face to face, that's part of uh, our human DNA. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I agree with you on that. So, uh, which brings me to the next um, question that I've been really thinking about was that uh, the Toronto region as a whole saw 45.4 million visitors and 100, um, I think about 10.9 billion uh, in visitor spending, yes. both new records. The Toronto visitor numbers uh, come on the heels of Destination Canada, releasing Canadian visitor numbers, announcing a record of 22 million international visitors and over 100 billion in tourism expenditure. All of these being brought to a screeching halt by the COVID. So it was no surprise that it was a welcome relief when uh, Ottawa announced 70 million of federal support to tourism programs spread between 66 tourism offices though, around the country. 
Okay, and if you compare that to some um, of the bailouts in US, uh, you know, they, they, there is a bit of a gap there. Do you think it's enough to stop the sector from bleeding for now? Are more waivers and incentives required from the government? Hello? We're so appreciated. I'm sorry. It was absolutely vital, and it was. We are so appreciative. Minister did intended to be sort of 50 percent of six months operating revenue. The, the, the federal government recognized that that would be key to keeping us at the table. Um, you know, we now need to work with provincial governments and, and and municipal governments to show our value and why we're going to be so important to the recovery. So yes, it was vital. Um, and we are only as strong in, in our part of the industry, in the destination sales and marketing organization, we are only as strong as the accommodation section. Right. Because that is who, almost across all sort of geographical areas, that's really who funds us for the most part, is the accommodation sector. And I think it's been a very strategic and a very positive relationship. Okay. Um, but until that sector, the accommodation sector recovers, we won't have all of our sort of arrows in our quiver. All of our resources won't be on the table. Um, and I think one of the reasons we were able to be as successful as we were with the federal government is, is they recognized that we were one of, if, if not in some communities, the most critical connection to recovery and the local economy and local community. Because that's what we do at the very essence of who we are, is we represent the local communities within which we work. And knowing the local communities the way we do and the nature of the business owners and the types of businesses and the products and the services, they recognized that we were key to the local community recovery. And that's why they invested the money. And so I would say, yes, if, if the recovery strategy, if, if, that is, if that presentation and perspective is sound, then they do need to keep in, investing in us to, to, for the recovery of the community. Right. And um, I w just attended a webinar just before that, and um, uh, before I met you, uh, uh, and in there they were just really talking about this thing that the governments are really um, appreciating and realizing the value of travel and tourism more so now, and the economic uh, injection that they they do they bring to the table, and uh, so uh, and that is why it's a no brainer. They have to support. They have to lead. Uh, this sector through this crisis, you know. So, um, absolutely, I, I agree with you there. Um, just, I want to talk a little bit about, although everything is about travel and tourism right now, Spot, there's a lot of focus that uh, it's a domestic travel which will return. It will be the individual travel that will bounce back before um, anything else in there is the business travel sitting. And part of the business travel or um, uh, is driven by our mice industry. So I, I do want to talk about mice, even though by some estimates it may be too presumptuous or, or too early. So Toronto's business events industry continues to be a thriving co component of our, the overall visitor economy. The economic impact of meetings in Toronto in 2019 reached uh, a record of $1.24 billion. Uh, in 2019, Toronto was also named the Canada's top meeting destination for the second consecutive year by CVET. What is the strategy to revive this very important segment of the visitor economy? Are there any protocols being laid around this particular segment? Um, yes, I think there's probably um, inundated is, is the word I would use with protocols and regulations. Yeah. Um, I think every sector, whether it be um, the venue sector, whether it be the audiovisual sector, whether it be the food and beverage and catering sector, everyone is looking for and trying to define um, what those regulations will look like. Um, I'm currently serving on the uh, um, Events Industry Council's um, re Business Recovery COVID Task Force. Um, okay. And, and our, our specific mandate is to help our industry navigate around the litany um, of rules and regulations and try to find some North Stars, try to find some some programs that, that, that really we can all rally around, um, not, not, as an, not as an organization to develop them, yet go out and get the best of the best and kind of get consensus for what's, for what's coming together. Working closely with the WTTC on the regulations that they've already sort of been leading and, and, and putting into the market, 
Um, but I think first and foremost, the recovery of that segment is really going to be based on the mitigation and, and eventually a vaccine. And then as, as borders open and as, as destinations um, are uh, more able to accept visitors, both the locals' willingness to accept visitors and the ability for one to get there to cross sure. the border, get on a plane. Um, but you know, you very well um, for Toronto. It's big business. We have two. We have Canada's largest, you know, meetings and events infrastructure between the uh, Metro Toronto Convention Centre, Exhibition Place, Enercare, Beanfield. You know, we have world class and substantive product in that in that market. Um, and that you know that doesn't you know. It's not doesn't end there. You've got the you've got the hotels that have invested in space and 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 the idea of uh, that not being a part of our community it, it's un, it's unimaginable and it, it will be at at, an, at at a future point. So what we're really doing is again working on and communicating um, to our community and mm -hmm. then also to our customers and clients. You know what are the protocols? What are going to be the considerations? Right. Um, what we can't do right now, which is the hardest part is say when yeah. we, we can't answer the when, because those really are um, up to the government to decide right now. And so I think what we're trying to do is build these gauges and these dials that, okay, when this starts to happen, then, then this starts to happen and, and really closely monitoring um, what the governments at, at all levels are doing, because that's really going to be, where we have to take our direction. You know, we can't set standards with the operators of the Metro, Tourism, Metro Toronto Convention Center um, that supersede anything the province is doing or the city of Toronto or the federal government. Right. Right. Um, and so I think what we're doing right now is really strengthening those community relations and the organizations with health departments, with the regulatory entities within our communities and working closely with them so that our industry has a seat at the table to craft the regulations so that they are really relevant. Right, right. So everybody in the community, in, uh, in the tourism industry is coming together, all the associations and all the bodies. And, and the Canadians, we have uh, very, you know, we listen to our government. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the difference, you know, we look up to our government, although in many other parts of the world, the governments are now being listened to or are taking a very active uh, role or becoming stronger because uh, the policies are coming from, from uh, them. Absolutely, you, you are right there. Um, at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm going to push you a little bit more on this when. Sure. Although the, you said that you can't talk about the when, I do want to push you a little bit, you know, uh, on that. So China remains Toronto's largest uh, overseas market with over 200,000 visitors. Despite declining in uh, 2019, the numbers have slightly declined, you know, but it, and there has been an increase of 24% over the uh, past five years. Tr Toronto continues to see a strong growth from the Mexican market, uh, welcoming yes. nearly 100,000 visitors in 2019, uh, representing five-year growth of 146%. Do you foresee the return of these international tourists? Are there any recovery sig signals? And here comes my when, where, and how markets will return. Absolutely, I think um, you know, cities, cities, are, cities are incredibly resilient. Um, and they are because they sort of epitomize the ultimate sort of connectedness of, of us connected in a city. And that, that's one of the reasons they are so vibrant and so relevant and so resilient. Yeah. Um, so I do think we're going to see international visitors again. I think, um, you know, if, if out of respect for you pushing at me, um, I think international is, is part of our future, but it's not part of a future uh, in Q2 or Q3 of, of 2020. Okay. Maybe Q4 by the end of 2020, Q4, we could potentially see some international travel. Um, the indicators we have from the airline industry, from other uh, sources of talking about routes and availability, um, you will be able to get on a plane and, and, and come into Toronto from international. Um, and hopefully the borders will allow you to do that and, and some of the governmental regulations. Our product and industry will be there. Um, I think in terms of uh, the, the, the MICE international, long haul MICE market, we're probably into Q2 2021. Um, you know, we, most of our, most of our first quarter in Canada tends to be a lot of local and regional. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's cold here in the winter and that's not as 
well as a Torontonian. Um, not our top market for overseas, but boy, once you get into spring and summer, so we anticipate, and right now I will tell you, uh, 2021 could be a record year. Okay. Uh, if, if all of the business- 2021 uh, record year, that's encouraging. That's a very, very key message, uh, Scott. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> and I, I'm referring to the meetings and the meetings and event side, the, the business event side. Um, okay. Our calendar, because of all of the book, all business that was able to be moved from 20 to 21, we did so. And so the calendar in 21 is really good. And so what we hope now is that we can, that can stick, that we'll be able to have mitigation strategies that will allow those to happen. So where, where are you, what would your advice be to some of the other tourism boards who are listening to you right now, you know, and because we are all in a global village now, we have to learn from each other's best practices now. And just the way we have to share the vaccine, you know, we have to also share these best practices. So where would you spend your, your marketing dollars? in 20 for 2020 or would you just save them and then lump them together for 2021 now um well i do believe um that one of the unique opportunities we have again we're hyper local we work in these communities that we live in um and and we love and a great place to live is a great place to visit right that whole dynamic that exists i think we have an enormous opportunity as destination marketing organizations to really reconnect with our local community um, to really watch the way our local community comes out of its out of its shell, if you will, as we begin to re-engage with our communities, there's a lot for us to learn and a lot for us to capture. So I I would be and plan to be spending resources um, on working uh, with social media tools okay. to allow us to really capture that raw sentiment of our locals re-engaging. Because again, just the way locals engage with their community, it's a lot the way visitors engage with our community. I um, they want to see the things that locals love to do and that, that, that live like a local, taste what a local tastes. It's a very important part of it. So I think we have an enormous opportunity to um, reconnect and be part of that recovery, that hyper-local recovery. Um, you know, whether that person is from London, Ontario or London, England, um, the tools we have to talk to them are, are very similar. Earned media, print, display, um, social uh, direct email, a lot of those things are the same tools. This is the audience. So yeah. I think we can refine some of our tools and, and look to be a better resource for our, some of our community organizations. So I really hope we have resources. And I would say that the areas that I'm the most intrigued with right now from a community perspective is our restaurant community and our art, mm -hmm. art and culture community. Um, yeah. and, our, and it's such a big hub of art and culture, right? Toronto is. It, and it's such it's so authentic it is yeah. so authentic it is so who Absolutely. we are right and yeah. i think you know we plan to spend dollars helping and support that that sector um because without you know we need the hotel community and and, and they're they're going to be part of the recovery as, as as more and more people can travel from further and further away okay yeah absolutely and the art culture are that we need to make for make it through this. So we need to find ways to market those organ those 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 parts of our community. Okay. So in 2019, Tourism uh, Toronto partnered with the Toronto Region Board of Trade on a landmark economic impact study. That um, uh, I think it was the data was based for 2018 data. It found that the visitor economy generated about 10 billion in overall economic impact to the city. Do you think we will return to those numbers ever? And how long it will take, perhaps based on your experience of previous crises? Um, well, yeah, the previous crises, crises are uh, somewhat irrelevant because of the scope and scale of this one. But I, I am, I'm an optimist. And I don't think, I think by 2023, we could be back to where we were in 2019 okay. or 2018. I think we've got a, a good two or three year build to get back there. Um, you know, we in Toronto, we are not constrained by capacity. Um, I, I, I am not a fan of the, of the word over tourism. I think there's been some poorly managed tourism. I don't think over tourism is, is, is an industry trend. There were areas that were enormously impacted and, and, and need, and, and need to address it, but it's not a systemic issue in our industry at all, in my perspective. And that's certainly not the case in Toronto with the size, with the infrastructure we have, Welcoming those is easy for us. 
yeah. and, and, and things like vaccines are, are there. So I'm optimistic that I think um, we could be back there by 2023. And I think that to me feels really doable. Right. That's, uh, that's interesting uh, to, to hear because I think there's a lot of doom and gloom and uh, yes, it's, um, yeah, I'm looking at it as a lead time, you know, when you plan for a big conference or the uh, citywide conference, that's a lead time, 18 months, you know, so they, let's just plan for, for, um, for the new beginnings uh, down and it's not that far away. Okay, so a um, little bit moving away from COVID. We are a city where more than 50% of our population was born outside of Canada. We are a city that's a Canadian epicenter of culture, ethnicity, thriving LGBTQ and black communities as part of a hub for entertainment, sports, technology, finance, education, and business, you name it all. And, and Toronto's got uh, all, um, everything, little bit of everything. And as you mentioned, authentic. It's a reflection of Toronto's own diversity and part of our DNA as a city. Please uh, share your thoughts and reflect on the Black Lives Matter pro uh, protests uh, in US and how Toronto's reaction as a city been. Well, I think the city has been uh, incredible in its response. Mayor um, and when I've, I've interacted with the city, um, understands the need for empathy in our community, right? In our, in our, in our world right now. Um, you know, I, I, I share this with a lot of my close friends um, who I'm, you know, talking to at this time. And I really say that Toronto is, diversity is an external view. It's this number of this, this number of that. Um, and I, I say to them, it, Toronto is multicultural in a way that goes beyond diversity. Um, and, and I think at times, um, the proliferation of, of, of racism is at the heart of the, the Black Lives Matter. Um, and I'm not sure that's about diversity. I think that they are conversations that can, are somewhat dependent on each other, yeah. um, but they're, they're not the same. I, and I would hate to conflate them. Um, and so I think the leadership that has been shown by um, Mayor Tory, by uh, the leaders of the community and by the community itself, um, sort of has affirmed every, everything I had hoped for as I moved to this community. The, the, the multiculturalism that I experienced coming here as a visitor was what drew me to want to live. Both my wife and I have said that during the new process and, and after being here, that that was the element of living in this type of a world city with a world view reflective of the world was one of the things that drove us here. Um, and, and so I think the conversations around diversity and, and around systemic racism um, happen more genuinely in a city like Toronto. And I commend everything the city is doing in regards to that. Thank you. Th and thank you, Scott. That's very profound uh, what you have said. So on that note, what I'm hearing is that every crisis creates an opportunity and in Canada it ra rallies people together as one. We believe in Team Canada's ability to rebound. However, flexibility and speed is key to this fluid and fast situation. Thank you for this very insightful discussion, Scott. It has been my pleasure. Thank you.